Greetings and welcome to Tidbits of the Word with your host, Bill Redfield. Today's presentation is with Pastor Sam Buckingham of Columbia River Fellowship in Mansfield, Washington, where for the third Sunday in a row, no congregation is present due to the COVID-19 constraints, which include no gatherings so as to protect one another from spreading or contracting the coronavirus. This is a work in progress and an adjustment for which we are greatly appreciative of your patience. Pastor Sam is going to bring us the first of a two-part message on Psalms 91. So let's join him now. Good morning and welcome to our service today. Our governor has decided that this is going to be extended or our stay-at-home order, so he says we're going to go to May 4th. That means we're going to be meeting like this at least for another month, uh, hopefully no longer than that. We're going to miss Easter or Resurrect Resurrection Sunday, and we can celebrate together in our hearts. Uh, we do have some new technology we're working with. Uh, we have some new cameras, but we need to get different cables, so we're still using the same camera we were and I'm so thankful that we have this camera. Hopefully our sound will be a little better. We've done some different things. And also we have a new lighting system right in front of me. Uh, it's pretty bright and hopefully that'll help some things. Um, new lighting system, uh, new cables next week. We hopefully next week we'll be using some better cameras. So we're just gonna hang in there. We're gonna keep doing what we're doing. And I know that you guys are praying we just had some answers to prayer. A young lady who was really sick did not have this COVID-19. Uh, she was just really sick, had pneumonia. They tested her and she came out negative and we're thankful for that and she is feeling better. Uh, we wanna pray for Brenda Webster who is going into nursing homes and other type facilities like that. And she has to put on all the garb and all the face shields and the, and the masks and she has to go in and and look at all these facilities and some of the, the some of the facilities she is going into do have people who have tested positive. So we wanna pray for her. So let's pray right now. And I know there are an awful lot of other requests and I'll just pray and you know what your requests are and you take them before the Lord and we're gonna to agree together. So Heavenly Father, we pray today that we would just uh, remain calm that we would do what you've called us to do. Lord, we thank you for the healings that have taken place. Lord, we're praying protection over our entire area. Lord, that we would be safe from this, that our congregation would be safe, our children would be safe, uh, safe our elderly would be safe. And Lord, we're praying that you would use our ministry to reach people. We ask it in Jesus' name. And also, Lord, we pray for Brenda, that you would pr protect her as she goes into these places. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. One other quick note is, uh, I think we're going to put this back on Facebook, just not have a link to the YouTube, and you'll be able to get it at, on the YouTube also. Uh, that was working better this week. And we're asking that you would share these uh, recordings with as many people as you can. I'm not sure how to do it. I don't have Facebook but you can press share and send it to the people that is on your Facebook and with your friends. And that way we can reach as many people as we can. We've had people tell us that they're watching it more than once. And I'm grateful for that. I'm hopeful and grateful and pleased that people are getting something out of it. So today we're going to do part one of a two part series in Psalms 91. Due to the fact that we're a small church, we get to hear testimonies every week and people testify about what God's doing in their life and some of the struggles they have. And every once in a while, people will get up and say, you know, I read Psalms 91 and it really encouraged me. And as I was looking for uh, sermons for this time, I thought, well, what, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? And as I was praying Monday night, the Lord did speak to me, I believe, and said, talk about Psalms 91. So we're going to do that. We're going to go through the first probably six verses today, and then we'll go to the rest, starting with verse 7. We'll finish, we'll finish Psalms uh, 91 next week, and I hope you get a lot out of it. 
Now, there's a lot more information in Psalms 91 than what we will cover today or probably next week. But I want all of us to be able to, to, be, able to be encouraged by God's promise of protection and care. Luther said this about Psalms 91. He said, this is the most distinguished jewel among all the Psalms of consolation. I'm going to read to you right now from my Bible the first two verses of Psalms 91. And the scripture says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. This is what Spurgeon said about this portion of scripture. He said, The blessings here promised are not for all believers, but for those who live in close relationship with God. Every child of God looks toward the inner sanctuary and the mercy seat, yet all do not dwell in the most high place. They run to it at times and enjoy occasional approaches, but they do not habitually reside in the mysterious presence. And that's in the presence of God Almighty, and we're going to talk about that a little more. So we are talking about a constant and continuous dwelling, not just during a time of calamity, but all the time. And it's real important for us to understand that. The word abide means to continually dwell. So not just when things are tough, not just when things aren't going right or when you're sick. And those are times we should come to the Lord. Those are times when we should abide. And I'm thankful for people who do run to that when they're in trouble. But the Lord is really looking for people to stay that way, to stay with Him, to abide with Him continually. So this is a promise to those who continually dwell or abide. Remember John 15, 4 that says, Abide in me and I will abide in you. Well, that's what we're talking about. People, he said, people who continually dwell in me or stay with me, or live in me, I will continually dwell with them and stay with them. Now, let's go back and remember a few years ago. You remember 9-11? Do you remember what happened during that time? Now, my kids were pretty little. I think my son was in the sixth grade. And people got scared. And I will give you just one for instance. I was out on a football field with a PE class doing PE. And a, and a jet flew over. And at that time, we were starting to see a lot of jets. And this is about just a few days after this had happened. And uh, the kids were really scared. And when that jet flew over, you could tell that that jet was armed. You could see the missiles. It was ready to go. And it came low and it came fast. The kids were pretty afraid. They were scared. And some of them got down on the grass out in the football field. They were afraid. A lot of people were afraid. And so what happened was, at that time, I should say, I was pastoring two small churches, trying to do the best I could, and teaching. And we had some prayer meetings, and one in both churches, one here in, in uh, Mansfield and one in Bridgeport. And several people came out to that prayer meeting, and we prayed over our nation. Because people were concerned, and they were afraid they were headed to war, and they were afraid that terrorists were going to come and and destroy our nation, and they didn't know where they could go or where they should be to stay safe. And we kind of have something like that happening now. Where should we go and where should we be and how can we stay safe? You know, because we go through times like this. But the problem was, after we met, and after we had that prayer meeting, and there were people there you just wouldn't think would come, but they did in both meetings, pretty good crowd. What happened was, after a while, it kind of just went away. And not only in our area, but our entire nation had little meetings like that in churches all over. And people would come and they would pray because they were afraid. And there was nothing wrong with them coming. There was nothing wrong with them praying because they were afraid. But remember, we should have stayed with it. And that's what God's looking for. He's looking for us when we have trouble, not just to come to him at that time, but to stay with him even during the good times. That's what he's looking for, and that's what Psalms 91 is talking about, continually dwelling. So right now, and it's been going on for a few years, we're in the beginning of times that I would call 
perilous times. That's what the Bible calls it. And the way you overcome perilous times is to stay with the Lord, is to dwell with him continually, abide in him. And he is abiding in us. And he takes care of us. And he covers us. You know, back in uh, the sci-fi days when I was little, there were a lot of sci-fi shows. And when the spaceship would get in trouble and the bad guys would come, the captain would say, well, the first thing would come to his, out of his mouth would be, raise the shields. Raise the shields. But you know what? When you're under the wings of God, when you're under his shadow, that's our shield. And you don't have to raise it and then drop it. We should have it up continually. We should be under his shield all the time. And I can always remember those shows when they'd get attacked, the shields would stop and pretty soon someone would say, Captain, Captain, our shields are down to 20%. You know what? God's shield can never be penetrated. It can never be penetrated. His shadow can never be penetrated by the enemy. And that's the promise of Psalms 91. Now, here it says we're to stay under the shadow of the Almighty. Almighty means God Almighty, or the Almighty God, or my favorite is the unconquerable God. In other words, he cannot be conquered by anyone or anything. Especially when we, when we stay under his shadow, under his shield, he can't be conquered. And if he can't be conquered, then we can't be conquered. What can mere man do to us? What can any pestilence do to us? What can any government really do to us? Nothing. When we stay under the shadow of the unconquerable God, under God Almighty. He is the Almighty One who was and is and is to come. There is no one else like Him. So I can't think of a better place to be under, can you? There's no place to be under, but under Him. You can try things. We talked about that last week. People tried to buy what they needed, but you can't. You can't go to the hills. You can't go to the mountains. You can't go to the bomb shelter. You have to come to the Lord. That's the first place. And whatever happens, he says that you cannot be snatched out of his hand. We need to learn that. We need to trust in it. Because that's what the Lord is all about. Now I'm going to read verse 2 again. And it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. He is our refuge. And we declare it. How do we overcome things, right? How do we overcome? Through the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony, of, of the testimony. It says, his testimony, their testimony, our testimony. That's how we overcome. We, have to de we need to declare that we are safe. And that's what the psalmist was doing. He said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. We can declare it. We can say to the devil and to anyone who comes up against us or anything, anything, I'm under the Lord. I'm in his fortress, and I'm taking refuge in it. The word refuge means a shelter, protection, fortress, a hope, which the world does not have. We have the hope. A place of trust, and that's important. A shelter from the storm. Okay, when you're in the fortress of God, when you're in the fortress of God, you trust. And you say, I know that God is with me. He's with us. When we are saying, I'm under, I'm in his fortress that can't be penetrated, and I'm taking refuge in him. And trust is an important thing. Psalm 73, 28 says, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all your works. And really, in perilous times, God is calling us to speak and to say, this is where the refuge really is. This is where the hope is. 
And when you take refuge in God, you have the confidence and the power to declare that to a world that is in need. The world needs the Lord. People need the Lord, especially right now. And when perilous times get worse, as we think they're going to happen, like birth pangs. And I know, having gone through two births, my wife had two babies, and they were big ones. And I know what that was like for her, and I know how the birth pangs went. Back in those days, we had stopwatches. And we would, we would hit the stopwatch when a birth pang came on, and they would, we would stop it, and then we, we'd tell, you'd tell your wife or you would tell the nurse, well, that one was three minutes in between. And then you'd do it again, and it was two minutes and 50 seconds. And then you'd do it again, it was two minutes and 30 seconds, and pretty soon it was one minute. And pretty soon you had an 11-pound baby. <laughs> the happiest time of my life except for marrying my wife. But that's how it works. Birth pangs come apart, and then they get closer, and they get closer, and they get closer. The scripture says, right now we're, we are in the beginning of birth pangs. And we're going to have to learn that we must stay under the shadow of the unconquerable God, God Almighty, the Almighty God. I know that the Lord is with me. I trust in that. So when we are in this fortress, when we are there, we have all the trust in the world in God. And we know he will protect us. And we know he will take care of us no matter what. Now I'm going to read verses 3 and 4. The scripture says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now the fowler here means one who catches birds in a trap or in a snare. Now who is that in our life? That's the devil. That's Satan himself. He's looking for ways to trap us. He doesn't want us under the shadow of God Almighty where he can't touch us. He wants us out. And just like we did during 9-11, people started to wander out like chicks do. And I can remember an old cartoon called Foghorn Layhorn, and the chicks would be out, and they'd get out, and pretty soon one would get under the fence. And the one thing that they were show, so uh, afraid of was that the chicken hawk was going to get them. And so they try to get those chicks back in where they're supposed to be. Well, the devil is like a chicken hawk. He's, he preys on people. He's roaming to and to and <laughs> Let me say this again. I've got my tongue over my eye teeth. I can't see what I'm saying. He's roaming back and forth over the earth looking for someone to devour. That's what he does. And so if you don't want to be devoured... Get under the feathers of the Lord, like a chick should, back underneath where you're protected. Don't jump out underneath the fence. Stay where you're supposed to be. Uh, pestilence here could be like a plague, but some commentators say that it's more like locusts. Locusts. Now, I've never seen locusts in real life. I've seen pictures of it where it a big, huge swarm where we'd get black outside, would come and just devour everything in just a few minutes, just destroy everything. So locusts are something that are horrible and destructive, and that's what the devil is like. He's a pestilence. And there's a lot of things out there that want to steal from us, and that's the devil. Verse 4 is talking about taking refuge again. And the word take means to trust, so you trust your refuge. Trust your refuge. Then it talks about his truth and his word and his promises are our shield and our buckler. A buckler could mean like the chain that knights used to put over their bodies. And it would not just protect the front, but it would protect their whole body. The Lord is our shield. His word, his truth, his promises are our shield and we need to stay in it. And we are going to stay in it. I believe it. I believe that 
there are people out there right now that want to or have walked away from underneath the shadow of God, underneath the feathers, underneath the shadow. And they're hearing this message, and they're saying, I need to get back under. I need to go there. I need to get back because I need protection. I want to survive this one way or another. So I'm calling everyone to come back if they're out. And if you're there, stay there. Because the Lord will protect us. He will take care of us. Let's read verses 5 through 6. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. That's a really good scripture. I really like it. It's uh, real descriptive. Terror here... A lot of Bible scholars would say it'd be like a robber back in those days, looking to rob you, waiting behind some hill, waiting behind some tree to jump out, to jump out and hurt you and take what you have. And the devil always wants to rob. He is the one who robs. He's come to rob, to steal, and destroy. That's what he does. And during a time like this, people need to make a decision. Are they going to go out and have a chance of being robbed or come in where the protection is. Some of the things the devil can steal is your peace of mind. There's a lot of people out there right now that have no peace. They're stressed out. They're having panic attacks. Listen to me carefully. Get under the shadow. Get under the wings. Get under the feathers of God Almighty. A robber cannot get you. The devil cannot come there. And it talks about the shield. Now remember, we have a shield of faith. So when the arrows do come, just like the Roman soldiers would do, when the arrows come and they had fire on them, the fiery darts, they would put their shield up and other people would put their shields up and they would get and hunker in behind that shield and that fiery dart would hit the shield and not them. And some of those shields, most of them had a piece of leather over it. So when those fiery darts hit the shield, the fire would be extinguished. And that's where we want to be, under the shield of God. Because we want to be protected from the arrows of the enemy. And the enemy can be used by the devil uh, through words or thoughts or anything like that. And we want to have peace of mind. Peace of mind is in the Lord. Peace of mind is under the shadow of the Almighty. And then I want you to notice some of these other words. These words like night and day and darkness and noonday. See, we're talking about around-the-clock protection. Around-the-clock protection. We need to stay abiding in the Lord because that's where the protection is. And there's never a gap. There isn't a time where I'll be protected at night, but boy, I better look out during the day. Or noon is the worst. Or 10 o'clock at night is when I really feel bad. When you're under the feathers of God, in His shadow, under God Almighty, the mother hen, so to speak, there's never a time of day where you're not protected. Never a time. Because this is round-the-clock protection, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. Especially now, when we're heading into perilous times, scripturally. And I don't know how long this perilous time is going to last. I just don't know. I think it's going to come to an end. I think there's going to be a time when things are going to get better. But remember, birth pangs come in intervals. So we need to be ready for another thing. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it'll come or when it'll come. But biblically speaking, we know things are going to happen. So we as a church, not just our church here at Columbia River Fellowship, but as a church in the United States and in the world, we need to go back to the Almighty. We need to stay there and not let these things overcome us. We just are not going to let them overcome us because the Lord is our protector. So what better place is there for us today? And I want to end with this scripture, and you find it in Isaiah 40, 31. 
But to those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. <laughs> that's strength. That's supernatural Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost strength. Not our own, because we can faint. But when you're walking with the Lord, when you're waiting on Him, that word to, means to uh, expect something. Waiting and expecting something great. You shall not be weary. You will not faint. And the Lord can use you. So get your families under the Lord. Get your friends under the Lord. Get your churches under the Lord. And that goes for pastors like me. We walk outside of the protection of God just like anybody else. Don't think we don't. Pray for us. Pray for your leadership. Pray for your people. Pray for your families. And I'm going to pray with you right now. And I am calling people back to get underneath the shadow of God. God Almighty, where the protection never goes away, it's around the clock. And we can trust in it. And then I'm going to ask people, if they've never accepted Christ as Savior, now is the time. Now, some of you may notice that I'm being a little more evangelistic during these uh, recordings because the Lord has led me to do this. If we were in our church right now, I would be having an altar call. So first thing, if you've never received Jesus Christ, please do so. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent is more than just being sorry. Repent means to turn your life around. You're saying to God, my way is not right. Your way is right. Lord, I believe what you did for me on the cross, that you died for me to take away my sin and to give me the power to overcome so I can be more than an overcomer. Praise God. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we're praying for those. And just pray with me if you've never done it. Lord, I repent. I know I have sinned, and maybe I need to tell you what some of those sins are. But, Lord, and if I have to, I will. But, Lord, right now, I'm asking that you would save me. And I know you died on the cross for me even before I believed. And right now, I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again after three days. And my sins are being taken away as far as the east is from the west. I don't have to pay for them because, Lord, you have paid already. And now I know that I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And if you need to rededicate your Lord, pray with me right now. Rededicate your life to the Lord. Pray with me right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would show me the way back. I'm repenting of my sin, and I'm going to get under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm coming back, and I'm never leaving. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to walk in your word, in your truth, in Jesus' name. And now you may be hearing our fire whistle is going off, and you can hear it through the building, probably coming over my microphone. So what we're going to do is pray for whatever's going on there, whether it's an ambulance call or a fire. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for whatever is going on. We pray that you would protect our first responders, but we pray you would protect those who will, may be in harm's way, and we know that you can do it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So that's what we have today. And we're going to have a song in a minute, and we would like to have you just listen to the song, and if it, you know, really, if it uh, soothes you, if it makes you feel better, if it draws you closer to the Lord, that's our prayer. And if you've received Christ for the first time, let us know. Write us at P.O. Box 314, Mansfield, Washington, 98830. Or if you've rededicated your life to the Lord, let us know. Write to P.O. Box 314, Mansfield, Washington, 98830. So praise God. The song is coming up. Next week, we're going to be here for several weeks, and I'm hoping that we have even better technology so things can be done a little better. And actually, our technician is enjoying doing this, and I hopefully am getting better. So this is a challenge, and I know it's a challenge for everybody. But be encouraged in the Lord. He is our protection. He's our shield. And under Him, we can not fail. Amen and amen.
his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the song in the heart. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise ye him in the firmament of his power. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise ye him in the firmament of his power. Instruments and organs, praise him with the loud symbols, praise him upon the high sounding symbols, praise ye the Lord, praise God in the sanctuary, praise ye in the government of his power, praise ye the Lord, praise God in the sanctuary. Excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery in the heart, praise ye the Lord, praise God in the sanctuary, praise ye him in the firmament of his power. Let everything that hath the breath praise the Lord. Sanctuary, praise Him in the firmament.